Republicans have no shortages of ways to suppress votes, get them tossed out or dilute their effect. But many of these tactics popped up recently in a place you might not have expected. California. We've told you here before about this scheme. After the state mailed ballots with free return postage to every registered voter this year, the California GOP put unauthorized but official-looking ballot boxes in Republican-friendly locations like gun stores. The practice is not only misleading, it may be illegal. In California, you can give your ballot to someone else to turn in, and you're supposed to sign a box on the envelope to do that. But in order to minimize disenfranchisement, the state won't invalidate a ballot simply for lacking that signature, which was the loophole the GOP used to do precisely what it accuses Democrats of doing without any proof. Tonight, we've learned that Republicans have agreed to take those boxes down, and the state attorney general says it's issuing subpoenas to party officials to learn the extent of this scheme. But of all the places to shoot your voter-suppressing shot, why California? There are a few competitive house races there this year, but it's not as if the state's electoral votes are within reach for the Republicans. There's no strategic advantage to be gained here, or is there? If you want to see the socialist Biden-Harris future for our country, just take a look at California. Blaming our best and allowing society's worst, that's the story they write in Hollywood. That's if the lights even stay on in California anymore. The American way of life means you speak your mind without retribution, without being kicked off social media by a self-righteous censor in Silicon Valley. The truth is California is the RNC's favorite boogeyman. It's large, home to one of every eight Americans. If California were a sovereign nation, it would have the fifth largest economy in the world, and it's diverse. It's overwhelmingly liberal. Registered Democrats outnumber Republicans by two to one. The GOP mindset is, if you can't beat them, paint them as a one-party state of un-American, illegal immigrants and Hollywood liberals. Oh no, if you don't vote Republican, your suburbs will turn into San Francisco. That's not an exaggeration. Here's what Ohio Republican Jim Jordan tweeted just last week. Quote, Americans love America. They don't want their neighborhoods turning into San Francisco. Hmm. No Republican loves to play this card as much as Donald Trump. You got fires eating away at California every year because management is so bad. The governor doesn't know he's like a child. He doesn't know what he's doing. And I've been telling him this for two years. They've got to take care of it. Every year, it's always California. Never, it's rarely somebody else or someplace else. But Nancy Pelosi ought to go back to her district and take care of it because her district has become a mess. Number one in the country for going down. Trump has repeatedly played politics with California's misfortunes. Ironically, though, this weekend he's headed to California to beg for cash. After being thoroughly trounced by the Biden campaign in September fundraising, the president will hobnob with the state's richest Republicans in Orange County on Sunday. One wonders if he will tell those donors what he's tweeted so often in the past four years, that if it wasn't for California's votes in 2016, he would have won the popular vote. Yes, it seems like centuries ago. But back in 2016, even after, the race had been, even after the race had been called for Donald Trump, the Hillary Clinton votes from California continued to roll in. In fact, that's a function of a very California-sized problem and a new front for Republican attack. The state counts its ballots very slowly. It was an issue in 2018 as well, as well, and also in this year's March primaries. There are more than 20 million voters there. The majority of them already vote by mail and the state accepts any ballot that's postmarked by election day, meaning the count always goes on for days after the polls close. This November, California's vote counting challenges may be bigger than ever before. The state just announced that it has already received 1.5 million mail-in ballots, 10 times more than it had collected at this point in 2016. The prospect of historic turnout and historic problems has Republicans salivating, eager for any news that can help them contest the election result and rally the public against California-style voting systems in other states. So joining me now is California Secretary of State, Alex Padilla. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Absolutely. Thank you for the invitation. and Allow me to correct the record because... Uh, you're right, California is not the most populous state in the nation, the most diverse state in the nation, has the largest economy of any state in the nation. We have uh, more registered voters by far than any other state in the nation with a strong democracy and access to the ballot to boot. 
OK, so what in the world is going on with this GOP ballot box issue? Is it not fraud? We're hearing they're taking them down, but they still want to, quote, harvest ballots, they say. And now there are subpoenas coming from the state. What is the latest on this story? How did they think they could pull this off? Right, so here's the latest. The Attorney General and I uh, gave updates earlier today. Uh, for starters, we've got to distinguish between the rhetoric some Republican Party representatives and office holders are making via Twitter and yes. elsewhere versus what their own attorneys have uh, already pledged to us in writing. They've made legal commitments uh, to remove the ballot boxes. From what we can tell, they have been removed. That's not just taking their word for it. There's folks out in the field verifying this. Uh, they're not going to continue the use of misleading, unofficial, unauthorized ballot uh, uh, boxes. But here's the deal in California. Is ballot collection allowed? The answer is yes, but it must abide by state rules, which include, uh, as you mentioned earlier, the requirement for whoever's assisting the voter to add their name uh, and signature to the ballot to obtain the chain of custody. That's a big part but, of what was lost with these fake drop boxes. But as you say, it was lost with these fake drop boxes, but surely votes were already delivered to those boxes. Are those votes going to get counted or are they going to be thrown out, the ones that were done before you guys came in to try and enforce the rules? No, look, uh, the, the ballots that were retrieved via those boxes will be counted because we don't want to penalize the voter twice, right? They've already been duped and misled by unofficial boxes labeled as official. We don't want to uh, strip them of their voting rights or the right for their ballot to be uh, counted uh, as a result. We are asking voters to go to vote.ca.gov and click on Where's My Ballot? It's our ballot tracking tool available to every voter in the state. You can sign up to receive alerts by email, text message, or a phone call on the status of your ballot, okay. including confirmation when it's been received and counted. So you can have the peace of mind that your ballot did indeed get there and it's been counted. We've heard a lot, including from the president, about his supporters going out to, quote, observe at the polls. What special measures are you taking in your state to prevent that from turning into voter suppression, voter intimidation uh, at the mm -hmm. polls? Uh, once again, we think we have a, a balanced and very good policy. Is uh, uh, polling place observation allowed in California? Absolutely. But we also have strict and clear laws against the uh, uh, harassment of voters or intimidation of voters or interference with the administration of the election. So, you know, folks are welcome to come. We prohibit electioneering in the vicinity of a polling location or voting location. Uh, but uh, observation's okay. Uh, don't step over the line. Uh, we have election workers that are trained to maintain the smooth uh, administration of the election, allowing people to vote uh, and keeping anybody wishing to disrupt uh, away. In several elections now, as you know, uh, we've seen the GOP make an issue out of the speed of California's vote counting or the lack of it. Uh, this year, with historic levels of mail-in ballots, there's a chance uh, that those votes could take longer still to tally. Um, what makes counting ballots so difficult in California? And, and do secretaries of state across the nation have a plan if Trump tries to declare a premature victory on election night and say, no more counting in places like California? Yeah, well, I think uh, most elections officials, by and large, will say it's more important to get it right than to get it fast. Uh, and there's several good reasons why it takes a little bit longer in California, starting with the volume. You know, more than 21 and a half million voters on the rolls. That's larger than the population of any other state in the nation, with the exception of Florida and Texas. So the sheer volume is going to take us longer. Number two, all the important checks and that goes into protecting the integrity of the vote, uh, especially the signature verification process, one of the most important security measures in vote by mail. So you can't have it both ways. You can't say, let's rush the vote without saying, are we doing what's necessary to protect the integrity yes. of the election? For uh, on election night- for, Do you have a plan contests, to protect we'll the election from idea. Trump though? <laughs> uh, look, on election night, we'll have the uh, an idea on how most contests are gonna turn out. Or for closed contests, and for final numbers, it will take a couple of weeks in California. I think the difference this year is uh, with the expansion of vote by mail so significantly in so many other states like Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania. It could be that if the presidential race is too close to call in a lot of battleground states, we may not know for a few days who the next president or the, who the president's going to be for the next four years. And that's OK. That's the process at work. It's not the time to panic. It's the time to be patient. 
I think the problem is that there will be somebody trying to panic everyone at that moment, and, and it will be interesting to see what you guys do. This weekend, the president is making a rare appearance in Southern California. Even though he's dragging his feet on aid to fight the wildfires there, uh, he's passing the hat at a fundraiser in Orange County. He's even trying to make a play uh, for votes in the state, tweeting yesterday, quote, people are fleeing California. Taxes too high, crime too high, brownouts too many, lockdowns too severe. Vote for Trump. What the hell do you have to lose? Uh, why does he seem to have such a problem with your state specifically? Uh, look, I think we go back to four years and he still can't accept the fact that he lost the national popular vote. Yes, he won the Electoral College, but he lost the national popular vote and his ego just can't handle it, even all these years later. And uh, look, uh, we, we see all the, the polls that are out there. We know uh, uh, he's not exactly leading in the polls uh, and it's having an effect on his ego yet again. Uh, one, one last question for you, Secretary of State. Last, uh, late last month, you approved a $35 million contract for voter outreach programs in the state. And state Republicans are making much of the fact that it went to uh, uh, SKD Knickerbocker, a partisan communications firm that employs big Democratic names like Anita Dunn and Hillary Rosen, among others. What is the story there? Was there really no independent, non-partisan firm that could have done that work? Uh, well, most of the firms that uh, expressed interest in the contract had uh, experience and relationships uh, on one side of the aisle or the other. Uh, so we uh, established that as an objective process for selecting the firm. But at the end of the day, here's what we need to know. Uh, it's a mandated voter education program, which I agree with. The legislature and the governor insisted on making sure voters in California understand what their options are for voting and protecting their health this November because of the COVID-19 pandemic. By law and by contract, this is a nonpartisan voter education campaign. And if uh, not just the, the registration numbers, but the early ballot returns uh, for vote by mail or any indicator, uh, we're going to have a very uh, high turnout uh, and in large part because of the success of this uh, nonpartisan voter education effort. California Secretary of State Alex Padilla, thank you so much for joining us.